today I'm going over to my brother's house to play one of our favorite games, Super Smash Bros. Melee. And that got me thinking, well, reminiscing really, of all the great times I've had with this game and the people I've played it with, and it's amazing to think how far the game has come in over 15 years. The esports scene is dominated by MOBAs like League and Dota 2, FPS games like CSGO and Call of Duty, and of course, fighting games like the more traditional Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom. And amongst these fighting games is one that's almost in a category all its own, Super Smash Bros. Melee. While by now most people are used to Smash having its own scene, the story of how this 2001 casual party game made for the GameCube became one of the most popular and beloved competitive games is one of the most fascinating tales of gaming history. Beyond even than that though, Smash has had a profound impact on an entire generation of gamers who, to this day, still love playing it. So join me as I take you on a journey through the legacy of Smash Bros. Melee. But let's start at the beginning. Before Melee came out, there was of course its predecessor, the original Smash Brothers on the Nintendo 64. Now, me and my brothers, like seemingly so many others, kind of missed out on this gem. This could have been due to the game being released somewhat late into the N64's life cycle, or perhaps that the true depth and feel of Smash wasn't fully realized in its N64 debut. Smash Brothers 64 was still very popular though, and it gained a following. Naturally, when Nintendo announced its successor, Super Smash Brothers Melee, it was met with a lot of anticipation. One, 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 one. Within Nintendo, we've had a lot of discussion about which of our most popular characters should be ready to appear in games when Nintendo GameCube comes to market. We think we've got a great answer. Take a look. <laughs> But no one in their wildest dreams would have imagined just how big Melee would get. Fast forward to the GameCube's launch in late 2001, not even a month after that, Melee was released. And let me tell you, everyone, and I mean everyone I knew that had a GameCube, had Melee. I was like six at the time, and I still remember other kids in school talking about it. Even people who didn't have a GameCube, even people who didn't play games, it seemed everyone had at least played it, whether it be at a friend's house or had siblings that played it. I remember the day me and my older brothers got Melee. We we just sat there for hours playing through the single player, and I was amazed at how fleshed out and defined each character looked and felt. Of course, I immediately recognized my favorites like Link, Mario, Pikachu, and Kirby, but there was a few others I didn't quite know as well. Captain Falcon, Ness, Marth, Ice Climbers? I never heard of these characters, and certainly most gamers my age who didn't grow up on the Super Nintendo didn't know about them either. But these characters, and all the other ones we'd unlocked, became iconic in their own way. From Captain Falcon's now famous Falcon it Punch. Oh my god! Fox's strange Japanese voice lines. And yes, even at such a young age, I remember viewing Marth as somewhat off. I guess I would categorize it now as questioning his sexuality. And this guy, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week, right here. I'm at PPMD showing the latest in Fire Emblem. <laughs> Like walking, man. What's awesome is that these characters appearing in Smash inadvertently introduced me to them and got me and many others interested in their own games. For example, I got into Star Fox games largely due to Fox from Melee. The real draw of Melee was multiplayer, but to simply refer to it as a multiplayer game mode is a huge understatement. Oh my god, what the fuck? <coughs> it's something that you would have had to experience at the time to fully understand, but the initial experience of playing Melee with a group of friends or family was something magical. People are somewhat numb to it now, but there was so much to laugh and smile about in Melee. From the hilarious and over-the-top death animations, to the ridiculous items. And just the fact that you're literally smashing your friends across the screen as Nintendo characters was truly some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. I remember just bursting out into laughter every time someone got the hammer and the music changed. 
or even more subtle things like the fact that you could have Mario shooting a gun or swinging a beam sword. It really was unlike any other game I had ever played. The camaraderie and pure joy I had playing with my brothers and cousins was insanely addicting. Nintendo's goal was to create an action-packed, party-style fighting game, and they completely succeeded in their mission. But of course, if that's all Melee ever was, it wouldn't have the lasting impact that it does today. No, for many, myself included, Melee introduced a whole new world of competition. Oh! 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 Oh, he went! Oh, he went out of roll! He went out of roll! Reminiscent of Genesis, he knew it was happening! He knew it was coming! And was that what you wanted from Evo 2013? Get to 10! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Really? The eyes of Wade the Drill gets a grab of his own, and this oh, is big meat Oh my kick. god! Fires back! After we had already unlocked all of the characters and completed a lot of the single player, in a strange way Melee developed sort of an endgame effect. That is to say, the main reason I was playing now was to play with, no, beat my friends or family. On a small scale, a sort of metagame developed out of this, where at first we would play with items on, then, as we realized items were kind of unfair, turn them off. And then, just items. Oh, everything on. Uh, I want, I want the hammer. Let's get some hammer action. Yeah, it's on. Hammer's already on. Good sword. Um, home run bat, of course. Food. Duh, food's all right. Um, party ball, party ball's always fun. We realized certain stages were unfair, so we avoided those. Each time I played, it became more and more serious and exhilarating because of it. The thrill of competition was now seeded into my brain. Me and my oldest brother would always verse each other. Me as my signature Link with the black tunic and he as Marth in white. It became an epic rivalry. And usually he'd win, but I would try so hard to get better and beat him. This was my introduction into competitive gaming. Ah! And on a much larger scale, this same thing was happening all over the world. From money matches to local tournaments, this innocent party game was becoming an intense competitive fighter. The Smash Brothers documentary greatly chronicles all of this in a manner I could never hope to emulate, so go check that out for the longer story. Yes, on its surface, Melee was a goofy party game, yet it also had incredible depth for those that tapped into it. Every aspect of the game had a competitive edge. Take something like character movement, it was fluid and intuitive. You had a double jump, attacks and abilities for every direction. A shield, grabs, ledge grabs, ledge guarding, recovery, smash attacks, it had the potential to be super fast paced. Every character felt noticeably different with its own distinct style and abilities. Well, aside from a few slight clones here and there. It was a game that was so easy to pick up and play, yet so technical if you wanted it to be. Again, the Smash Brothers documentary has a segment on this that is extremely well made that I'm going to show here. Players learned how to use wave dashing and other advanced techniques to speed up the game to the point where it basically got ridiculous. Most people figure that we put in about six or seven inputs per second, which is roughly about the same as professional StarCraft. It kind of broke the boundaries that people expected to see in Smash. There aren't set combos, there aren't a list that somebody somewhere decided what you can do. You can do whatever you want to with your character. You compare it to sports, you compare it to basketball or football where a person is in control of every movement of their body. And while the video game is just a series of zeros and ones, everybody looks different. I can watch a video of a Marth, I can tell you whether it's Ken or Neo or Azen. You can see the style in a person's character and that to me is incredible. And, you know, I've ran tournaments for MLG, I've ran Men Challenge, I've read ran Tekken, I've ran Halo, I've ran Gears of War, Rainbow Six, Shadowrun, Smash Brothers Melee, Smash Brothers Ball, so I've ran and been around a lot of high caliber games and I've seen them all and I think Melee is one of the deepest um, and most intricate games you can ever play competitively, which is crazy for a game made by Nintendo that wasn't supposed to be competitive with cartoon characters, but uh, it just kind of was like a beautiful accident. 
It's so crazy to think that all of this and much, much more with things like advanced techniques in the developing meta evolved from such a simple premise. My brother's friends also played melee. One of them was particularly good and mained Roy. The first time I played him, I got destroyed, much more so than my brother had ever defeated me. I remember distinctly having that feeling that winning in Smash versus my brother's friend was a massive challenge that I wanted to overcome. It wasn't like other games where I could blame it on some clear advantage he had or that the game was unfair. In my mind, this was a true test of skill. It forced me to get better if I wanted to beat him. This feeling kept me playing Smash for years to come, with whoever I could. <laughs> It was always and still is a blast to play, even if I know I'm nothing compared to the players who play it professionally. Back then, that didn't matter. The world was smaller. I just wanted to be the best among whoever I was playing with, because that may as well have been the whole world to me right then and there. That's another part of Melee that's impossible to replicate with a lot of online games today. That experience of local multiplayer and being in the same room with your friends is something you can't replicate online. For so many people, Melee means so many things. For some, it was a hilarious party game that they can still enjoy today. For others, it would go on to have a career-defining role in their lives. For me, it was a bit of both. Melee has brought upon some of the most fun and laughter I've had with gaming, but it also has introduced me to how intense and challenging gaming can be, and it's shown me that thrill of self-improvement and competition. Oh, and as for my brother and his friend, well, life goes on, people grow up, but still, on occasion, when we can find the time to this day, years and years later, we can still have fun playing. And you know, looking back on it now, in a sense, all along, we really were just that, Smash Brothers. <laughs>